Before we get too far in our study of geography, we need a system for finding and describing locations. There are several systems commonly used to find and describe locations, and most rely on a simple grid concept. Here are four common systems. We're really only going to address the first two in this video clip. The third and fourth are also grid systems. The third one is commonly used with GPS systems and is a very elegant system to use. And the fourth one is commonly used when you're depicting areas. So if you're lucky enough to own some land on the deed of your land, they might use the public land survey system. The alphanumeric grid system is fairly intuitive, and likely many of you have used this type of system. It was commonly used in road atlases, though GPS and smartphones have dramatically reduced our reliance on road atlases. See figure 9 shown here for an example of an alphanumeric grid. The location of the X on this map would be described as B2. What is, the lo what is located at C5? Hopefully you found the region that includes the tip of South Africa. Similarly, location Y would be denoted as D3. So you can see that this alphanumeric grid is fairly simple to use. In reality, most of the other grid systems are too. The other three systems mentioned also rely on a grid. For now, though, we'll focus our attention on the latitude-longitude system, also called the graticule. This is the system we will be using in our course. Notably, it is very important that you understand this system. So work through the lesson carefully, don't rush, and be sure to contact me if you have any questions. Additionally, I'll give you some links where you can practice using this system. The latitude-longitude system does not rely on numbers and letters. Rather, we use directions north and south of a reference line, and also east and west of another reference line. First, let's discuss latitude. Latitude is an angular measurement expressed in degrees that shows the distance north and south of the reference line called the equator. Thus, for latitude, the equator is our natural reference line. It represents zero degrees, zero degrees latitude. Notably, the equator is the imaginary line around the Earth halfway between the North Pole and the South Pole. And the two poles lie on the Earth's axis of rotation. Next, let's consider what it means to be an angular measurement. Check out this diagram and find the equator. Next, put yourself at the center of the Earth and measure 35 degrees north of the equator. On the diagram, you can see that Kyoto, Japan is a city that happens to be 35 degrees north of the equator. If all the possible points of 35 degrees north latitude were connected together, it would mark a line of latitude around the globe at 35 degrees. Now check out figure 1.13 where lines of latitude, also called parallels, have been drawn every 10 degrees from 0 to 90 degrees north. Notice that the parallels at 90 degrees north and also at 90 degrees south, which you can't see, are drawn as points, not lines. Most globes and world maps will have lines of latitude, parallels, depicted on them. They may show parallels every 10 degrees or every 15 degrees or some other interval as determined by the map maker. Pause the video here and review these very important concepts regarding latitude. The last point is interesting. Because the parallels are parallel, the distance from one degree of latitude to the next degree of latitude is fairly constant all over the Earth. It's roughly 69 miles. This table from a previous edition of your textbook shows just that. One degree of latitude, wherever you are on Earth, is approximately 69 miles. The same thing cannot be said for longitude, and we're going to look at that 
shortly. The seven parallels shown here are very important in our study of geography. In particular, we will use them extensively next week when we discuss the seasons. You should memorize their names and their values in degrees north or degrees south. Notably, the equator is at zero degrees and no north or south label is needed, but for all of the others you need to designate north or south. Also remember that at the poles, the parallels are, are points, not lines. I encourage you to find a globe to use, in, for instance, in the library, and find these important parallels. You can also see the parallels on figure 1.14 from your text, shown here, but I do recommend that you seek out a globe at some point as well, or use Google Earth. When using Google Earth, be sure to activate the grid lines by clicking on the View tab and then selecting Grid. Again, it is vital that you know the names and values of these important parallels. Consider writing them down now in your notes and drawing your own diagram. When you draw a diagram, write down the name of the particular parallel and also the precise value of latitude. For example, the Tropic of Cancer is 23.5 degrees north. Not 23 degrees or 25 degrees, but 23.5 degrees north. As you study the diagram or the globe, we've already noticed that the North Pole and South Pole are actually points, not lines. And also, you can now imagine officially where the tropics are. The region of the Earth that lies between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. The subtropics are the regions, are the regions just outside the tropics. Mid-latitudes, where we live, are generally between 30 and 60 degrees, north and south, and polar regions are within a few degrees of the poles. To stress that I really do want you to draw one of these diagrams for your notes, I'm going to do one right now just using a simple web whiteboard program. You can see it doesn't have to be deluxe. Just go ahead and draw yourself an Earth. Draw the Tropic of Can Capricorn, the Tropic of Cancer, Arctic Circle, the Antarctic Circle, the North Pole, and the South Pole. And you're going to want to label each of these and note the degrees. You get the idea. I'm just labeling a couple here. It's a little cumbersome on the computer, but you can whip out a, a quick diagram of this in your notes very quickly. There we go, my diagram. Most people don't have any problem remembering the equators at zero degrees and that the poles are at 90 degrees north and south. The other values you might have trouble remembering, but let's take a look. If you can remember that the Tropic of Cancer is at 23.5 degrees north, look at the value for the Antarctic and Arctic Circle, 66.5. If you add those two values together, you get 90 degrees. So if you can remember that, you just have to remember one of the values, perhaps 23.5 degrees north. Again, it's important that you know these locations and their latitude. We'll be using them next week when we talk about seasons. Now on to longitude. Longitude is an angular measurement expressed in degrees showing the distance east and west of the prime meridian. Now the equator was our natural reference line for latitude, but there is no natural reference for longitude. As your textbook explained, the zero reference line was agreed upon internationally in the 1880s, when zero longitude, also called the prime meridian, was set at Greenwich, England. Just as latitude is an angular measurement expressed in degrees, so is longitude. The angle is measured from the prime meridian to your location, either east or west. In this case, they've measured to 13 degrees west. 
If all the possible points of a particular longitude were connected together, it would make a line of longitude that circled the globe. The diagram here shows the lines of longitude, also called meridians, and that have been drawn every 10 degrees, from 0 degrees all the way around to 180 degrees. So from 0 to 180 degrees west, and then from 0 to 180 degrees east. All meridians must be labeled east or west, except for the prime meridian and the 180 meridian that would be depicted on the other side of this figure. Pause the video here and read through these very important points regarding longitude. The last point noted here is interesting. We see that meridians are farthest apart at the equator and they all converge together at the poles. Meridians are not parallel to one another. And as a result, one degree of longitude is different all over the globe. We said one degree of latitude was always around 69 miles. Well, one degree of longitude at the equator is about 69 miles, but as you move further toward a pole, either the North Pole or the South Pole, one degree of longitude gets smaller and smaller and smaller, until when you reach the North Pole or the South Pole, one de you, you can walk 180 or 360 degrees of longitude just with one step. They effectively all converge at the poles. So here we show a diagram that has both lines of latitude and light lines of longitude portrayed on it. In the next video clip, among other things, we'll discuss how to use the latitude and longitude system.